Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick one. We're just going to be reassembling this slant six head. Let's get to it. All right, I've got the guides and everything done on this head. Since I did the guides, I also lapped all the valves. I didn't shoot any video of that. The reality is some days I just feel like getting things done and not screwing around with, you know, cameras. So I didn't take any video. I do have a video of lapping the valves for the Magnum. I'll put that down in the comments. You can take a look if you're interested. The key here is make sure you lap the valves after you do the guides because the geometry may have changed when you put in the guides. And I say may have, it's 99% certain that it will have changed. The geometry on these had changed just a little bit. So went through, I actually had to do a little bit of cutting on I think two or three of them uh, and then I lapped them all in. Now that they're lapped, got it cleaned, painted, Really the next step is assembly. In order to do that, we need valve seals. Now the valve seals for this, if you took a look when I took it apart, there wasn't much left to look at. But we've got a cup style here. These go on the intake. And then there's an umbrella style here. And these go on the exhaust. So there are two different styles for this motor. There are some other types that, you know, clip on and they have a, a ring. In fact, when I took this one apart, that's the style it had on it, but I'm going to go back with this. Actually, I guess when I took this one apart, it wasn't like it had some of these that were disintegrated. The other one, the newer head that has cast wells, it had the other style. At any rate, this is what I'm going back with, whichever, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. Got a valve spring compressor that you'll need. Got my valves. You can see all of them are marked. So one, two, etc., all the way through six. These match the cylinder that it goes in. So when you lap them, you want to make sure that the valve goes back into the hole that it was lapped for, just to make sure everything is still the same. I also need some assembly lube. I'm going to use Luberplate 105. It's kind of my go-to for motor assembly. Then we need valve springs. So here are two different springs. This is a stock spring. It's just a single. And this is what came off of this. But I've got some higher performance double springs. These match what's in the motor. The motor that's in here is not a stock cam. It's a higher lift cam. So we've got double coil springs for that. So I'll be using these. And then you need keepers. This motor, like many, has different keepers for the intakes and exhausts. If you take a look at the stems, this has two grooves. This has three grooves. Actually, four grooves. <laughs> Can't even count. So the intakes have two grooves, the exhausts have four grooves. So slightly different, take different keepers. I also have a stack of retainers here. There are two different styles of retainer. There's another one that has kind of a dish in it. I don't have any of those to show you. Both these heads had this style, but this is the style I'm gonna go back with. If you have two different styles, it's actually kind of nice because you use one for the exhaust and one for the intake. And then when you're adjusting the lash, you can actually tell the intake from the exhaust just by looking at it real easily rather than having to figure it out uh, from a diagram. Kind of wish I had both styles, but I don't. So we'll go back with these. Again, if you've got both, I'd recommend using one style for intake, one style for exhaust. For simplicity, I'll just show you one of these. So number one hole is down here. One, two, three, four. We'll just do number four because it's kind of mid-head, easy to get to. And we're going to do an intake. So the intake is the larger of the valves. So I'm going to grab number four intake. I'm 
put a little bit of lubricant on it. And then come in from the other side. Again, the intakes take this cup type seal. Spring goes on here. Since this is a double spring, it kind of is tight fit over that seal, but it's still fine. We're going to take a retainer and we put it on here. And then our valve spring tool. I'll zoom out and show you how this works. So this cup goes on top of this spring retainer. Kind of like here. We close it down. And then this goes on the face of the valve, and we turn this, which runs this as a screw, which then tightens, and this will push that down. Once we have that pushed down far enough that we can see the grooves on the valve, then we can put the keeper on and then loosen it. I have to flip this head around, and I'll get things kind of adjusted and in a position where I can uh, work on it and show you what I'm doing. All right, you can see I have this cup on the valve spring, the retainers here, these windows are going to allow us to get the keepers in. This handle is closed down. This is just another cup for like a smaller one for if you're doing a small engine or something along those lines. Never used that small one here. And then down on this side, you can see this is run right up against the valve. And then when I tighten this, it's going to compress that spring. Let's see if I can get you where you can see that. So you can see it compressed it. And now we can see those. Now you can see the uh, grooves in the valve stem there that the keeper goes on. Then I have the keeper. It looks like it's just got one, but it actually has two. There's a second one all the way down here at the end. If you put a little bit of grease on these, they tend to want to stick to the valve and it keeps them from falling back out on you. Let's take a look again. You can see it's in there and there's the split between the two halves. It's effectively closed. That's what you want. If it's a big gap, it means you're not down in the groove. So just put them down in there. They go in pretty easily. Again, put some grease on them and it keeps them from falling back off that while you're loosening this up. Now I just loosen this which will take tension off that spring and it will grab onto the, well, the keepers are tapered so they're gonna go into the retainer and hold it all together. And there we go, that one's installed. I just need to do the other 11 and it'll be ready to go. It turns out that I did have another set of these valve seals. So they're a little bit smaller diameter so they fit inside these double coil springs a little bit better. I'm going to use those. Installing these is just slightly different because they uh, are a real tight fit. They've got this steel shell. So put it on the valve. It goes down onto this but oftentimes it won't fully seat. So I just take a socket that's big enough that it goes over this so this part with the spring is actually inside. This one is a 5 eighths. Just put it on there. And tap it down with a hammer. That's really the only difference though. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.